Hi guys, in this video we will be understanding the impact of water and carbon on climate change as well as learning about climate change mitigation techniques. So firstly we'll be learning about water and carbon cycles and the atmosphere. So water and carbon have a global warming effect on the Earth's climate when they increase in concentration. And this is due to the greenhouse gas effect, which we discussed in the previous video. And this is almost how carbon dioxide and water vapour act as a blanket around the Earth and causes the increased absorption of solar radiation. And this acts to heat up the Earth even more. And the greenhouse gas effect can be caused by an increase in concentration of CO2, water vapour, clouds, and also things like aerosols and methane. And this is because carbon and water in increased concentrations cause a positive feedback cycle, which if you remember from the first video on water and carbon cycles, this causes an amplified response. And this means that any initial input is amplified. So this is initial warming is going to cause increased warming because it's being amplified. So now we're going to look at the impact of water and carbon on climate change, specifically through this process. So this is our positive feedback cycle. So the main input to the cycle is more carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere from human activity, such as the increased use of fossil fuels. And the initial impact that this is going to have is it's, it's going to cause a global temperature rise. And this is going to have two impacts. Firstly, it's going to warm the oceans. And we learned about this in the previous video, but when the oceanic temperatures rise, this has a variety of impacts. The first one being that with increased temperatures, there is more energy for evaporation. And this is the movement of water from its liquid state to its gaseous state. So this is producing water vapour. So water is evaporating from the surface of the ocean. And so water vapour is going back into the atmosphere. That's the first impact of increased oceanic temperatures. And our second one is that with warmer oceanic temperatures, if we remember back to the last video, carbon dioxide is dissolved in the oceans. But when the temperatures increase, less carbon dioxide can be dissolved. So this dissolved carbon dioxide is released from the oceans and back into the atmosphere. So overall, increased oceanic temperatures is releasing water vapour back into the atmosphere and also carbon dioxide. Also, this global temperature rise is warming the tundra. Now, the tundra is an area of the Earth around the Arctic Circle. And it's a very cold but not a glaciated landscape. And in the tundra, a lot of the ground is frozen and a lot of CO2 and methane is stored within this frozen ground. And the areas of the tundra are areas of northern Canada and northern Russia and places like Siberia, where it's very, very cold. And when global temperatures rise, obviously this land, the tundra, is going to start to thaw and melt. And when the ground starts to melt in the tundra, this CO2 and methane that's stored in the ground is going to be released back into the atmosphere as well. So overall, global temperature rises are going to release more CO2, more water vapour, clouds and methane back into the atmosphere. And because of the greenhouse effect and these being greenhouse gases, this is going to increase temperature rises even more. So this is the positive feedback cycle of water and carbon and their effects on the global climate. So now we're going to look at ways that this process of global warming can be mitigated, which means prevented. And this is through climate change mitigation techniques. And the first one we're going to look at is carbon capture and sequestration, otherwise known as carbon capture and storage. That's what sequestration means. And carbon capture and storage involves capturing 90% of CO2 emissions, for example, from a power station or a factory, preventing this carbon dioxide from entering into the atmosphere. Because it's when carbon dioxide enters into the atmosphere that we're going to get a global warming effect. So the stages of carbon capture and storage is firstly capturing the CO2, then transporting it to its storage place. And usually 
this carbon dioxide is either stored in depleted oil and gas fields or is geosequestrated, which means it's stored underground in rocks. So this is a diagram here showing our power stations and instead of CO2 being released into the atmosphere, it is piped along and it's either piped into oil fields or coal fields or it's put into the rock below and this is stopping it from escaping into the atmosphere. This also has benefits in that by pumping this CO2 into old oil fields, any remaining oil which was at the bottom of the oil field can actually be pumped up and used. But the disadvantage of this is that if we have more oil and the oils then burnt as a fossil fuel, this is also going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So it's not much of a benefit because it's not having the desired effect of carbon capture and storage in the first place, which is to reduce CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Other techniques of climate change mitigation is changing rural land use and rural means areas which are not urban so things like farmland and in areas of grassland there are a series of things or land uses that can be changed to reduce CO2 emissions into the atmosphere to, so as to reduce the climate change effects. So firstly, we can avoid the overstocking of grazing animals such as cows, as cows release a lot of methane into the atmosphere. We can add manure to increase the productivity of our plants. We can revegetate areas, which means adding more plants. So we get more photosynthesis and more plants. So we get more CO2 stored in plants. And this has also helped by increasing irrigation so more plants can grow, therefore more CO2 can be stored in plants. In croplands, we can improve crop varieties. We can use the process of mulching, which is where you put dead leaf litter on the floor to increase the fertility of the soils. We can reduce ploughing because by ploughing field, this actually releases CO2 from the soils back into the atmosphere. Once again, adding manure to increase productivity and also through rotating crops because crops use up specific minerals in the soil. So using different types of crops keeps the soils fertile for longer. And then also in forested lands and tree crops, we can protect these areas from deforestation. Obviously, forests are big carbon stores and so they store carbon that otherwise would be released into the atmosphere so protecting these areas is really important, as well as reforesting areas that have been cut down so as to increase the size of the store so that more photosynthesis can take place and more carbon can be removed from the atmosphere and stored in trees. And then also in croplands, we can also, instead of planting smaller crops, we can plant orchards, which are bigger trees. Obviously, the bigger the tree, the more carbon um, that can be stored. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.